Hey guys, welcome to the show today. This is it. We're doing the ultimate test. This is a MacBook Pro versus an Alienware R12 full fat gaming desktop. We're trying to answer the age old question. Can you use your laptop to do some serious development? Now back when I used to work in the games industry, the answer was a resounding, resounding no. No way could you use a laptop to do some development. I'm gonna show you the difference in today's 2020 world. This is a Anywhere, R12, full fat. This actually only, only got an i7 desktop processor, but it's got an RTX 3080 GPU, only 16 gigabytes of RAM. On the other hand here, this has an i9, ninth generation CPU, but mobile. It has eight gigabytes of VRAM, and the good kind of VRAM, not, not the GDDR, I'm talking about the serious stuff. And it's got 32 gigabytes of normal memory. I'm gonna start the show doing some C++. We're gonna be compiling the full full Unreal Engine from scratch in Visual Studio. And let's see how much, which one's gonna win. Is it the RAM or is it gonna be the raw horsepower of a desktop? What is the difference? Is it gonna be significant i9, i7 or is it gonna be um, just a slight difference? Let me know in the comment section below and let's start this test. All right, let's get Visual Studio 2019 Unreal Engine SLN and let's get primed on this guy as well. Visual Studio. 2019, right. three, two, one, go. So it's neck on neck right now. Oh, MacBook Pro, slightly ahead using an SSD. This guy also has an SSD, but he also has a mechanical hard drive. Boom, neck on neck. We have the officially the i9 MacBook Pro did win. I'm just gonna do build only to start off with. Three, two, one, go. All right, something fun just happened. My MacBook Pro, too much, too much pressure. It couldn't handle the Unreal Engine build. And uh, it's actually restarted itself. I don't know exactly what happened, but that was weird. Yeah, it couldn't handle the heat. Maybe it got a bit too hot in this room. So the Alienware, we are officially uh, one hour and two minutes into this test. Anywhere is about 66 to 70% done completed. So we've probably got another half an hour to go and the MacBook Pro couldn't handle it. It's just restarted it. All right, to be fair, I'm gonna give the MacBook Pro another go. I'm gonna clean the projects and I'm gonna rebuild it again. But interestingly enough, let's see how fast it's able to clean the projects. Cleaning, MacBook Pro started to clean just behind. Side by side, so number 20, 15, 21, 16, 17, still on 21, cleaning the shader compile worker, 23 versus 19, 20, 26, 27, 21. It's uh, <laughs> cleaning a project. Does your project take this long to clean? It's, uh, it's a big beastie of a project. If I had a project this big, I'd be refactoring it. But of course, I don't have a project this big and it'll probably take forever to refactor it. Probably just best off making it better. Finished. 50 succeeded already on, yeah, it's, it's finished on the Alienware and it's still on the 28 on there. So the Alienware is twice as fast on cleaning. It's going to be twice as fast on building. I'm going to do another building test like it's, it's finished already. And this guy still look 25%. This is why you want a desktop processor because your life is gonna be amazing. It's gonna be fun to test out the new M1 MacBook Pros. I'm talking about the 16 inches when they come out because can they compete with one of these guys? I don't think so. All right, the results are in. This Alienware beast, it took one hour and six minutes to compile Unreal Engine 4 from scratch. And the MacBook Pro, both eight cores. This one's i9, has more memory, 32 gigabytes. And this one took two hours. It took over two hours, actually. Double, double the amount it took. Now, you know, to be honest with you, that's not that bad. I remember back when I was doing the games development, back in the days, doing a recompile, rebuild the shaders. That was my favorite time, because I could take, actually, it, was, it wasn't actually my favorite time. It was sometimes my favorite time. When I wanted to do work and I had to do it, I hated it. But when I wanted to go on a break, I can say, hey, I'm rebuilding the solution. I can jump on Reddit, have some fun. YouTube wasn't that big back then. 
But um, yeah, I could jump on Reddit, read lots of articles. It was uh, having a whale of a time just rebuilding the project. So two hours for a whole rebuild. It's a bit too slow if you're working in the industry, but for faffing around, it's pretty fun. And of course, if you try running it on battery life, you know, out and about, you're not gonna be able to do it. So it always really needs to be plugged in. So I guess it's not really that useful having it on a laptop, but the fact that you can run it on a laptop is good. But don't forget, this is for a full rebuild of the application, full C++ rebuild. So if you just modify one file, it's not really gonna be that bad. But now it's time for the real test. This is Unreal Engine 5, the preview build. We got Valley of the Ancient. Haven't launched this project before on either of these computers. So I'll show you how long it takes to launch it for the first time. And of course, using the editor, launching it for a second time, that kind of stuff. So you know kind of like the distant, so you know the difference when it's actually running in real life rather than the whole recompiling business. So right click, right click, three, two, one, go. It's straight up launched already. And it's crashed on the MacBook Pro. Whoa. Okay, so we learned that <laughs> you can't launch it on the MacBook Pro in Windows. But it launches on Alienware, that's pretty cool. 35 frames a second, right there on the screen. Have some fun, shooting some lasers. Boom. Amazing, look at that. These are all the vertices on the screen. This is, of course is 60 frames a second, that's cool. And this is the full rendered scene jumping across that area over and over. All right, I gotta say, that was pretty fun. So it launched on the Alienware RTX 3080. It didn't launch on a MacBook Pro, just crashed. Let's just see how Unreal Engine 4 rocks up on these beasts. I guess that will be a better demonstration. We're up on the Alienware. Took two minutes to launch. MacBook Pro is slightly behind. Hasn't launched yet. Oh, it's up there. Two minutes and 10 seconds. So actually launching the editor was pretty much neck and neck. 10 seconds difference, not that much. I guess let's check out the frame rates over here. So we got 35 on the Alienware and we got 35 on the MacBook Pro. So both of them are going really well. So usability wise, I'm seeing that they're both around the same. Not noticing that much difference. I'm gonna hit play to see how fast this demo goes. So it's not that big of a difference that I'm noticing from these guys. This guy's going around 80 frames a second, 75. This one's going around 50. So it's about 20 frames a second for this is RTX 3080. This is just a 5500 AMD. So this fella is, uh, I gotta say it's performing really, really well. We're using five and a half gigabytes of RAM. This guy's using five gigabytes of RAM. Obviously this one's doing 4K, so the resolution is a bit higher and it is going faster, but it's not dramatically faster like the CPU performance. GPU, I guess this demo is really old. MacBook Pro is going a bit mental, but the fact that it's running it really well is amazing. I'm gonna just stop them both right now. And yeah, using the editor, very, very slick and smooth. 50 frames a second, very, very slick and smooth on both of them. So side by side, I gotta say, if you are gonna be compiling a lot on a CPU, twice as fast. And this is the amount we're using while compiling. So it's around 11.2 gigabytes. I guess if you're doing stuff in the background, yeah, you'll need more. I actually have Epic Games in the background doing stuff. And uh, yeah, it's only 11 gigabytes, so that's pretty all right. But if you're just doing graphics, then I guess I couldn't get Unreal Engine 5 running on my MacBook Pro. I tried it on Mac, I tried it on Windows, just wasn't working. Hopefully I'll be able to find a way around it. But on the Alienware, but on the Alienware, this is demo running. It's 35 frames a second. Now, Epic say you need a 12 core CPU recommended and yeah, 12 core, I don't have that. I've only got an eight core over here. So this guy's obsolete already. Thank you. Thank you, Dell, Intel, sort it out. So this is the game running right now. 30 over 30 frames a second. We've got 35 right now. I lost the drone actually to show you around the world. Still getting 30 frames a second. Looks pretty good. Flying around, bit tearing now. This is inside the actual editor itself. Flying around, turbo mode. Whoa, this is using the new Nanite generation of levels. 
looks pretty fun, all this kind of cool stuff. But yeah, still 30, 30 plus frames a second. I'll return and run around the game. So character, it does look very, very slow. There is tearing on the screen, but this is 30 frames a second. And that's my little drone. E-interact. Boom. I just transported to another dimension. Now this transition may take a while to finish off if it's the first time entering the dark world in the editor. Hang tight, assets are being processed in the background. So you can't see, there isn't, there isn't a cue on the screen telling you what's happening. Maybe there is, maybe there's settings, you can enable it. Remember, I'm using this for the first time. Just thought I'd give you uh, a preview. And it is white on the screen. 20, bit of loading to do. So I'm just thinking right now, you probably do need a desktop computer if you're doing next-gen tech, because uh, yeah, I mean, for Unreal Engine 4, MacBook Pro could do it, did it well. But for Unreal Engine 5, this guy just is barely working it. Eight cores is barely doing it. If I was relying on MacBook Pro, all I'm seeing is Crash C. So that is something interesting to know. Desktops, they, they are the future. The future, makes sense. Yeah, well, why was I even thinking about this question? You're gonna need a desktop. Yeah, if you're doing anything next gen. Of course, of course you would. Whoa, this looks cool. It's a bit slow right now, 15 frames a second, but I guess it's doing some sort of loading. Okay, now it's back up to 30 frames a second. They've done uh, some good work over here. You can shoot. Okay. How do I do that? Boom. 